Sir Patrick Stewart has captivated audiences for six decades. He spent more than 40 years with the Royal Shakespeare Company, but he is best known as legendary Captain Jean-Luc Picard in the Star Trek franchise and as Professor Charles Xavier in the X-Men movies. Now, he reflects on his life and career in his new memoir, Making It So, published by an imprint of Simon & Schuster, part of Paramount Global, like CBS. I spoke with Stewart just a few days ago. When I read the book, I thought to myself, having spent some time with you uh, in years past, I could literally hear you saying the words to me as I read them. Well, that's probably the most important thing for me to hear, thank you. Because uh, I had never written before, maybe two, three hundred words for an introduction. I'm not academic, I had little education. So it, I was not really prepared for this, but the one thing I, I had an ambition about was that my voice would be recognized. I didn't want to sound like somebody else. Apart from that, it would make people think, well, he hasn't written it, <laughs> you know, that's not him. I love it, it's definitely written in your voice. What made you want to write this book? Oh, I had no desire to write this book. <laughs> really? Absolutely none. I have been an avid reader since the age of five. I devoured books. We lived very modestly, my family and I, in what was called a one up, one down. One room downstairs, the door opened straight into the living room. No kitchen, no bathroom, no toilet, no hot water. But it was home and it gave me the feeling that uh, I wanted something a little bit better than that. And uh, I think that was a driving part of my ambition. But writing a book was never part of it. Perhaps because I was too familiar with great books. I knew I couldn't do that. So I just tried to create a conversation. You are very proud of your sort of working class beginnings. I mean, you've done everything from, you sold furniture as a young man, you were a, a junior reporter at, in Mirfield at a city newspaper. And it was there that a, a young editor, Margaret Court, told you what your destiny should be, what you should be doing instead of what you were doing. Yes. It had been said to me before, my English teacher, Cecil Dormand, who, along with Ruth Winnow, in the, to whom the book is dedicated, because those two people had the biggest impact on my shifting my life from a working class boy with very little prospect to a, a, an act, a person getting acting training with far cleverer people than I was. So I could pick up things from them you know, little by little. Let's talk about um, the role that sort of put you on the map here in the United States. Uh, many in the entertainment industry didn't think that uh, Star Trek The Next Generation would be successful. Um, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry, I mean, the first time he met you, basically kicked you out of his house. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> Ian McKellen said, don't take the role, Patrick. Do not take this role. <laughs> I mean, were you, what do you think of the show's success now? Well, just to protect Ian okay. a little bit, he did say that, but it was not because he thought the role was the wrong thing so much as he knew that I had a line of stage work coming up and that it was very important stage work. And for the first time, my career was now beginning to uh, edge its way into being a leading actor. Mm. Um, and he said, don't turn your back on that now. You're almost there. And I said, well, my hope is that they'll wait <laughs> until I've had a go at this, you know. Yeah. But I, I didn't believe in it to begin with and certainly acknowledging Gene, may he rest in peace, that he had not wanted me ever. He was talked into employing me by the other producers. With all the, the wonderful things you've accomplished, you write in the book that your two failed marriages are your greatest regret. You're now happily married to Sonny, who I've had the pleasure of meeting. What would you say now, looking back, is the key to a successful relationship? Have you figured that out yet? I haven't put it into words before, but let me have a go at it. I think it's being open and a good listener and to make a connection. You don't have to be exactly the same, but it's necessary that you can share. I think it's very important. So sharing and respecting. Sir Patrick Stewart, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, and thank you so much to everyone for the invitation again. I'm delighted to be here.
I know. Making It So goes on sale tomorrow. What I love about Patrick Stewart, we're in this privileged position where we get to interview people that we admire and that we like, and in some cases we idolize. He still has that same feeling. He talked about going onto the Paramount lot, even when he was already a successful actor, <laughs> and just walking around, like we all do when yeah. we're on the Paramount lot, and say, so our favorite something. shows and movies were filmed here. He's Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart. Yeah. He's doing the same thing, going around like, wow, Gilligan's Island, you <laughs> have a lagoon right here. You know, I just love that sense of curiosity that he still retains, even though he's somebody successful. He's very story. special. He never disappoints, does he, Glad? Because yeah, yeah, you spent a lot of time with him. And I, know. I, Such a I, I was saying to the audience that you were floating right before I was. The yeah. You saw me yeah. in the green room. Yeah, so and the and he was, he's that kind of a person. Yeah. And Ian McKellen, who told him not to take that role, also officiated his wedding with Sonny, but then found out that he wasn't registered to be a preacher oh. or priest. <laughs> yeah. And so that marriage had to be fixed. Yeah. Well done, <laughs> Vlad. It's a good interview, man. I love it.